Hi everyone, Coach Alexa here. Um, I wanted to talk about bad runs, bad days, um, and, and the factors that are sometimes at play here, because often we have a run that just doesn't go as well, you know? And sometimes we can identify the reasons. I've had a bit of a stomachache going into it, or, you know, I had a bad day at work, things have been a bit stressful at home, whatever it might be. Um, but sometimes we really can't identify those causes at all. And I guess the first thing to say is that that is absolutely, totally normal. Everybody, from people starting out to people competing at the Olympics, will have training runs and indeed whole days or a few days where things just don't click. You don't feel like you're performing as well as you could. Um, things feel harder work than they usually do or they did the previous day or the previous week. And that is completely normal and fine. And most of it is purely down to the fact that we are humans, not robots. Every day we're a little bit different to the way we were the day before, the week before. Things change in our bodies constantly, all of the time, and that landscape is always shifting. So the biggest thing to say, you know, if a run hasn't gone well or it hasn't felt great or you felt disappointed for whatever reason by a particular uh, session or activity that you've done, it's completely normal. It's one of the things I often say to runners that I coach or I put training plans together before. Um, you know, my background um, professionally prior to getting into coaching was as a project manager. And there are always, there's always contingency in the plans that I write. You're never going to have 100% of the runs in, you know, a four month marathon training plan, for example, go swimmingly or even be completed. So I factor that in personally as a coach from my, my background. And then it's interesting, isn't it, to think about why perhaps that, that some things have, have gone awry, particularly when we can't quite put our finger on the exact reason, like, oh, I got stitch or, oh, I had a dubious curry the night before. Um, and I would say from conversations over the years with my runners that probably the biggest reason for runs unexpectedly not going so well is sleep. So, you know, we've even if we're down an hour on sleep to usual, can start having some quite profound effects, not just on our bodies, uh, but also on our brains. And when we're training, when we're pushing ourselves to do longer distance or perhaps faster paces, we do very much need our brains. Not only do they manage all of the processes in our bodies, energy and oxygen getting to the muscles, uh, muscle contraction, balance, coordination, you know, key useful stuff. But they're also um, involved in motivating us, enabling us to feel like we are kind of capable um, and, and, and confident to do a particular run or a particular challenge. Um, yeah, so, you know, a lot of things can be impacted and sort of thrown out slightly when we are a bit down on sleep. Um, so that's a really, really big and important one to try and think about. And for better mental and physical health in the longer term, sleep should really be a priority. I know I've done a video on uh, the amazing magical health benefits of sleep before. And it's also worth thinking about what I kind of you know, call occasionally life load. So, you know, if you are studying for a qualification outside of work and you've got an exam coming up, or if your children are about to start a new school year, or, you know, if you're going for a promotion at work, or, you know, if you're having um, a health issue that's being investigated at the moment, you know, there are a whole myriad of reasons why your brain, your body is not going to be quite in the same state it is. It's not going to be quite performing the same way on your runs and you're not going to feel as good, probably, generally. And I think often in life we don't notice necessarily the impacts that these things have on us. They kind of creep up in the background, sneak up on us a little bit. And running, I find, or any sport, in fact, is kind of like shining a bit of a spotlight on some of these things. We're asking bigger questions of our body when we're out running, hiking, cycling, swimming. So we're more likely to notice that it's not performing as well when we're just ticking along, sat at our desks, you know, on the sofa in the evening. It's not going to be as easy to spot when our brains and our bodies aren't quite functioning as well as they could be. So that's another reason sometimes why these, you know, sort of bad runs um, come as a little bit of a surprise to people. 
the biggest thing I would I would say if you, you want to kind of try and demystify some of this stuff is keeping a training diary and don't just talk about the runs, but maybe make a note of sleep, of mood, of energy levels, of what you've had to eat, you know, and you'll start quite quickly to spot a few little trends, which I personally find really helpful. So one of the things this week uh, that I've noticed has, has crept up on me a little bit it was one of the reasons behind doing this video is the fact that I've let my uh, time bedtime go to, to later by almost an hour over the last couple of weeks. I was on holiday. I've been back for about a week and a half now and I've not got my bedtime back to where it should be for, for term time, as it were. Um, and that is really started to catch up with me now. So I think I need to, you know, I had that realisation this morning as I sort of prized myself out of bed when normally I'm a bit more of a morning person. Um, and yeah, a little, little bit of a diary, keeping a note of these things can really, really help just spot these trends. I hope that's helpful.